So last week I spent $1,500 on some used Lego sets. What did I buy with that $1,500 that I just spent? Well, I bought not one, not two, not three, but four Lego modular buildings. So I wouldn't blame you guys for thinking that I'm just a little bit crazy for spending that amount of money. But if you guys know Lego modular buildings, you'll know these two especially right here are some of the most valuable in the lineup of I think like 16 or 17 modular buildings now since I believe they started in like 2007, 2006. So it's been a long time coming. And I've been collecting the modular buildings over the years and I've been waiting, holding off on buying a few like this one, the iconic Green Grocer. It was second to the Cafe Corner and Market Street set. The Green Grocer alone goes for about $1,000 used. I think new it goes for anywhere between $2,000 to $3,000, which is just incredible for a Lego modular building. Those are Lego Star Wars prices and to see that for a non-licensed set is pretty incredible. And it's why a lot of people like to buy the modular buildings is because they're so valuable as well as being really cool as well. But we also have the Fire Brigade. This also goes for around $500 to $600. But the fact that I got Assembly Square and the Grand Emporium just made this a purchase I couldn't resist. However, there is a very big asterisk on that $1,500 price tag. I bought all four of these sets, as you can tell, used. And this is what today's video is about. Buying used Lego sets, the pros and cons. The pros being, I got an incredible deal at $1,500 for all of these modulars here on the table. But the con being, if we take a look at the fire brigade over here, one side looks pretty good. The other side, yeah, not, not so good. Not so good. If you can't tell, the Lego pieces are yellowed and that is unfortunately a side effect of buying used Lego and something that I want a lot of you to know when going into it. So before we go any further, guys, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm having yet another WhatNot stream giving away five 501st brand new and sealed 501st battle packs, as well as a Republic fighter tank on my WhatNot stream, which is gonna be co-hosted with my friend Emma Soros this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's right, not only am I giving away these sets, Emma's joining up on the stream. We're gonna have a fun time just catching up, chatting about Lego, maybe talking about that new A-frame cabin that I just reviewed, but also I'm gonna be selling a lot of Lego Star Wars sets, as well as a ton of minifigures. So some of the items that I'm selling during my WhatNot stream are figures like the Phase One Commander Cody minifigure, which might go with a potential upcoming helmet set. So you're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss out on figures like that, as well as Lego Star Wars sets that I'll be selling during the stream. You'll find links down in the description to bookmark the stream as well as to join on WhatNot and get a free $10 credit when you join for the first time. So those links will be down in the description. I can't wait to be co-hosting with Emma. And there's no catch, guys. This is six separate giveaways that are gonna be happening during the stream. So that gives you six chances to potentially win any of these sets. And you don't have to buy anything. You just have to sign up on WhatNot and make sure you're present for the stream, which again is this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Links are down in the description. Thanks again to WhatNot for sponsoring this video. So when it comes to buying used Lego sets, I would say it's a 50-50 shot, whether something is really used or it really is just in pretty good condition. In this case, it was kind of mixed actually, it's right on that fine line between really used and, and good condition. So this set along with the others here had a lot of dust on it. That's very common to find on used Lego sets. That's not a really big deal to me. Personally, I use this Dyson vacuum brush. It's an accessory for a Dyson vacuum. You don't really need to use this. In fact, I'll probably make a video in the future about how you can uh, dust your Legos with a really cheap method. I can't wait to make that video, that'll be fun. Uh, but this is the most effective way. This is what I personally use a lot. It's expensive because you have to have a Dyson vacuum and those vacuums are pricey at like a couple hundred dollars. And then this accessory alone is $50. Uh, what makes it so nice is that you can brush and vacuum the dust at the same time. And then when this brush accumulates dust, you can actually do this, which it extends outwards and you twist it, collecting all the dust into the vacuum. It's actually really smart. I've never seen any uh, accessory tools like this and it works perfectly on Legos. Uh, this brush is meant to be scratch free so it doesn't uh, scratch the plastic pieces, which 
can be scratched fairly easily because it is indeed plastic. It's not like glass or anything like that. So it's something to be aware of. So when it comes to yellowing on a set, this fire brigade just, ooh, it's rough. Light bluish gray along with white Lego colors are the most well known for yellowing, meaning they change color. I mean, you can see here, it literally has like a yellow tone, especially when you compare it to the other side. Now, I thankfully knew this ahead of time. This was a local purchase. I knew the person that I bought, so this is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. I didn't buy this from any other platform or anything like that. So I knew going into it that the sets were gonna be used, that they had some yellowing on it. Now there is a way to reverse the effect of yellowing. I believe if you use a hydrogen peroxide, there's this weird method of dumping the hydrogen peroxide in a bucket and submerging the Legos in it, but you have to put it out in the sun for like a couple hours and you have to be careful so that it doesn't sit out there too long. It's very strange. I'll link a video down in the description showing the process if you guys are interested in it. So it's possible to do that. However, I personally haven't attempted this hydrogen peroxide uh, method of de-yellifying Lego, so I can't confirm how well it works. I'm sure it works, but like, again, you have to be very careful. There's a science to this, it seems like. Uh, so I, that's why I haven't tried it yet. Personally, there's two ways to get around Lego yellowing. First off, you could literally just reverse the bricks, which is what I sometimes do. You can literally just take the Lego bricks off a set and reverse it. In this case, because it's a building, the yellowing will be faced on the inside. Of course, you could just leave it. You know, they are modular buildings, so you could just, you know, put them next to each other. In this case, most of the yellowing is on the side of the fire brigade, so you really can't see it once you do this. There still is some yellowing right here on the front side. And then of course, there's the final method, which is just simply replacing the Lego pieces. And this is the biggest pro tip I think I wanna give you guys is like, know going into buying a used Lego set that if there is yellowing, if there is wear and tear, know the cost of the pieces, go on BrickLink, go on Pick a Brick, find out what the cost of those pieces will be to replace. And sometimes in the case of like the green grocer, these sand green pieces, for example, are so expensive. I think there's like $10 a piece for these special one by twos on the front side. So some Lego sets can have really rare pieces. In fact, I just purchased a used Lego Star Wars The Ghost set that which had missing pieces on the back side, and there's two big bracket pieces which had only appeared in like three sets, and they haven't remade the piece since like 2000. I don't know, 18, it's crazy. And so the price of that one piece was like $10 a piece. So again, do your research when buying used Lego if there is missing pieces or if there is yellowed pieces and that, that's something that you wanna replace. Now, some people will look at this and be like, eh, yellowing, that's not a big deal. Just also know that it drives down the value of the set as well. A lot of people don't like buying yellowed sets. I was comfortable with it because I knew either A, I could replace the pieces or do the hydrogen peroxide method or simply just leave it because it's not that bad because it's really just focused on one side of the set. Now again, I'm just talking about Lego modular buildings here, but this really applies to pretty much any used Lego sets that you'll buy wherever that might be. So whether that's Lego Star Wars, Lego Anita Jones, Harry Potter, all, all the Lego themes, it applies to all the sets. I've bought used Lego Star Wars sets with plenty of yellowing on them and Boy, that, that's always a disappointment, but hopefully the seller will disclaim whether there is yellowing or not. Technically speaking, I think people do have to disclaim whether a set is yellowed or not, but because it's already categorized as used, some people don't do it. So if you're buying a used set, especially high priced ones like the Fire Brigade here, and especially like this green grocer that goes for a thousand plus dollars used, you know, you really wanna ask the seller questions. Is it yellowed? Is there color differences between the pieces? And if you can, ask for photos online, or if you can, meet up in person, check out the set before you purchase it. Really take a look all the way around. Look at white, look at all the lighter colors, make sure they aren't too yellowed. And if the pieces are yellowed, or if there's some significant like use on the set, sometimes I've gotten really dirty bricks or they have nicks in them. I've seen some pretty weird stuff happen with used Lego sets. Thankfully, it's not super common to find that. But when you do, make sure you get the appropriate pricing. I don't wanna see any of you guys out there getting scammed on really heavily used Lego sets. You should be paying less if there is more yellowing or if there is more use on the set. You know, if it's in a really good condition, no yellowing, then sure, it's probably worth whatever the going market price of that set is. When I find a heavily used Lego set, I immediately go into my head and think, okay, how much is this going to cost to replace? You know, you can do rough estimates, 50, $75 on average if a lot of pieces are heavily uh, yellowed, especially when it comes to light gray and white. Those are fairly common pieces, you know, 
colors like sand green or tan might be a little bit more expensive to replace. So you got to keep those things in mind. Do your research ahead of time, especially if you're like me, spending $1,500 at once. It's worth taking a couple hours, looking at the cost of the bricks and making sure that you are a smart buyer, a smart consumer, making the right purchasing decisions when getting used Lego sets. So hopefully this was a helpful video, guys. I'm so excited to finally have more modular Lego buildings in my collection. I now only need the Cafe Corner, Town Hall, I think the Pet Shop, and the Palace Cinema. So that's four more modulars to complete my collection. That's how close I am to finally having all of them, which is pretty exciting. The Green Grocer was one that I've been looking at for a very long time. If you happen to have a Town Hall or a palace cinema modular that you want to sell i'll leave my email down in the description we can talk we can talk hopefully it's not heavily used hopefully it's not yellowed but we can talk if it is maybe we can get a better price thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys have a great wonderful day and i'll see you guys later Bye bye